Okay, so in this tutorial, I'm going to give you guys some tips on drawing on a colored background. Now, um, I'm going to be using black and uh, white ink. Now, the main thing um, that is different with drawing on a colored background as opposed to drawing on white is that when you're drawing on white, you're just drawing shadow, okay? Um, and you're drawing from dark to light because the white of the paper represents the light. Now, when you're drawing on a colored background, it's a little bit more challenging. You're, work you're working from the light and the shadow to the middle okay so this color is almost like the local color of whatever you're drawing so for example let's say i have um uh, like a cylinder or something cylindrical form like so all right so if light is shining from this direction and that means the shadow is going to be on this side now as the shadow is on this side, that also means that um, that also means that up here is going to be light. Now, <clears throat> this is the reflected light area. This is a, the border of the shadow, right? And then, in this area is the area in light. Now, within the area in light, there's going to be a section that is receiving the brightest light. So this area for example could be where the highlight is just like if you look at somebody's um, forehead on the light there's going to be an area where that's really bright and that's the the highlight in other words that's the area where the light is brightest because it's facing directly to the light source so when working on um on a medium background you're always going to have an area that is you're going to be working from light to shadow and also from shadow to light. And the blue in this case is the local color of the object. So it's almost as if this cylinder is blue and I'm drawing the shadow and I'm drawing the light. So the, the, the light marks are just representing light. And the black marks are representing the shadow. And it's pretty much the same thing that he applied in this drawing, which is, you know, I'm just gonna pretty much kind of mimic that. So I could actually use the white lines or I could use you know the um, I could work from either direction I don't think it really matters and the same the same thing would apply with uh, you know with a sphere right so let's say light is coming from this direction so it would have that separation of, of light and shadow so this is the shadow you know either direction you want to do it See, this is the cast shadow. All right. And then you'd have the highlight, which would be a little bright spot at the top, just like that. And then you may have a little, you know, fading amount of light. Because in other words, this is the bright spot right here. But as, as it, you go, you move away or out from that bright spot, it gets a little bit lighter and lighter as it goes towards the shadow. So there'll be a bright white spot here and then it, it fades out, goes into shadow. So in the same way, like um, you'd have light around the cast shadow. See that? So as a matter of fact, I could make this be a, a cube just to demonstrate this. So this would be the side that has strong shadow. It's like half shadow because it's somewhat facing the light much more than this is. This is facing away. This is facing that direction. This is facing up. So this side is going to be pretty light up here. So this is pretty much how you work on a medium on the colored background. And this is the cast shadow around the ball or whatever shape this is. See, that's pretty much it. So essentially all I'm doing is applying light values and shadow values. And that accounts for the light and shadow and also creates that sense of volume. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this hand. 
<clears throat> and it's, it's really good practice because it helps you to not only focus on um, shadow, but also to focus on light as well. So I'm just going to go in and just start outlining this. I already sketched it in in pencil. And I'm um, just going to go in and outline some of this. Okay, so <clears throat> I think that's pretty uh, okay for now because um, I'm not going to be doing, you know, all of this. I'm just doing enough for you to see, get a good idea of how you go about doing this. So <clears throat> first thing is you're going to have to, as I said with most of the, you know, my drawings, I'm imagining these forms as basic forms, either as a cube, as a sphere, or as a cylinder or as a combination or distortion of all of them, okay? Because you can see forms that are somewhat cylindrical and somewhat spherical and somewhat cube-like at the same time. So you have to keep these basic forms. These three basic forms in mind will pretty much conceptualize all of the forms. So for example, like this thumb, I see it as a cylinder, all right? So it's really like that. And uh, the tip of it is really like a, you know, a spherical form at the end, all right? So <clears throat> I'm going to put in the shadow side, which is right here. And then over here, you're going to have the light. And if you, if you ever get um, a hold of this study by Dura, you'll be able to see, you know, just how he conceptualized the form. Pretty much the same concept.
Okay, so essentially, uh, you know, the, the whole idea is you're working with light and shadow. So now instead of like just, you know, fading out to, to, um, towards light and then leaving the white of the paper, you're actually drawing in the light itself to create that kind of reflection and to create the highlight as well. So <clears throat> in what's happening, especially in these areas, of course, all of this is in, is in shadow in these areas. But what's going on in, in here is where it's almost like you have um, something like, like this. And then you have, um, actually, maybe I'll draw it here or here. It's almost like you have something like this. All right. And then imagine light is shining from this direction like this. So on this side, you're going to have shadow forms. See? Right, and on the other side, you're going to have the light. And that's, that's the basic principle that's going on. You may have a line. Sometimes you'll see or Sometimes I'll just use like a, a, a thin streak of light and then around it. It's almost because it's implying that the brightest area The brightest part is in one area and then because the, the form is is um it's almost like picturing it like this it's rounded okay imagine you're looking at a a cylinder this is really just a cross section of a cylinder like this okay so if you're looking at it you know straight on like this and imagine a light source to this side so the area that's directly facing the light source like this will be brightest that's where the highlight is and um, as it turns away it gets darker and darker all right until on this this side that's facing away will be in shadow completely so this may be completely in in shadow and this will be in light but of the areas in light this will be the brightest so it's the same thing when light is shining on this you know you're going to have this little area be the brightest, but you're still going to have areas of light around it. So the area that's within this highlight will be brightest right there, but you will have specks of light around it as it fades away from the, from the light source. And that's essentially what's going on in these areas. So that's why a lot of times you may not, you may not see the brightest um, part of a form be directly on the contour, but it may actually be at the edge like that. 